Unity only way you're ever gonna learn You look back and it's all in the past I'm dwelling on the thoughts I cannot say to you If I don't say the words then maybe it's not true Good evening and welcome to Steve Wraith's True Crime Podcast and tonight we're discussing whether it's time to set the man free. Brunson fit to be free is what I entitled it. Of course he's now known as Charles Salvador. Got a, a great panel uh, together tonight. Just want to thank everybody for coming on. Uh, everybody here has got something to say about Charlie. Uh, Bobby from the uh, the Real Honest Truth. Terry Ellis uh, who I've had on the podcast before. Good friend of mine. Uh, Anne of course who you uh, know from uh, doing many shows on this channel. Lee, a former prisoner and a former prison officer. Holly, uh, somebody who's worked again in the prison system. And uh, Kevin, who you will have seen on the uh, documentary uh, last week, which um, has, had, has had quite a response, it has to be said, um, from the general public and uh, probably had massive, well, certainly has had massive, massive figures last week. Interesting to see Kevin's uh, take. And Kevin, I am going to come to you first, mate. So I'm going to put you up here um, and, and ask you, uh, first and foremost, um, you know, with regards to Charlie, is it is it feasible for him to come out of prison straight away from where he is? I know the answer to this, but I'd like I'd like to hear it from you because you you've served a long term sentence. Charlie is in segregation. Is it is it is it you know is it fair to let him out really after fifty years with you know no break out of the, out of the prison like that? So the problem you have is that people say he cannot be released into society if he behaves in a manner that is not acceptable to society whilst in prison. Um, it would also depend on where Charlie is released to and how he's released. So if you took Charlie and you stuck him in a field, in a home, with woods and trees, a load of paintbrushes and paints, he'd be calm and relaxed. You stick him in a city, in a hostel, or in a tower block, that might be somewhat problematic. Of course, everybody wants to be released, and I believe he could be released. Yes, um, it's how he's released and what they put in, in place to do that. Because Charlie could be released, say, for instance, uh, I think the place is called Warren Hill, and you skip the decap there, but they integrate you back into society. And now, say, for instance, he was knocking around with an old lifer, 58, 60. I'm 55, so I don't know, I'm an old lifer. I better be careful when I say that. <laughs> Someone a little bit older than myself who's, who's had some experiences that Charlie will face upon release. So we can ease him into it. But I don't think he should be around too many people. He's been in the human warehouse for far too long around too many people. But my answer to that question is yes, I do believe he can be released. Okay. Um, just for people, just to paint a picture for people, I've visited Charlie on numerous occasions. Charlie's in a segregation unit. It's a prison within a prison. Um, it's uh, it's he's got He's got things now which he didn't have you know many many years ago which is a telephone he has a tv he has his canteen and his cell he's got a bit more to you know to to, to keep himself happy uh, radio um things which you know he's, he's had to earn by behaving himself so it's it's the the fact that he doesn't integrate within the prison population um, you know, he only sees three other inmates, one of whom he, he doesn't really particularly get on with, it has to be said, but there hasn't been any problems. And that's a big that's a big plus for him with his parole hearing. Um, Terry, again, somebody who's been in prison, um, who's come out, who's turned over a new leaf, who's had that opportunity to integrate. <coughs> your perspective, you know, what, what's your take on, on Charlie? What, what's the best way? To release him, I heard something today. I, I listened to the report today. Um, I think it was a prison psychiatrist to come in and and more or less said that it would be it wouldn't be right to let him straight out, but that a a managed a managed situation would be beneficial. Let him integrate with other prisoners first, then potentially move him to an open prison. Is is that something you would see as is a reasonable way of doing things? Um, you know, I've. Um... I've met many lifers and lots of guys who've done lots of years, uh, 20, 30, 45 years. And at the end of a sentence, we all get put into a decap prison. And we're told this, this will integrate us back into society. Um, and I know from my own personal experience, um, the last year was, was, was basically a, a, a smoking mirrors process. You know, I was, I was put in a decap. I was told I would get work. I was told I would be integrated. And, and on the last 14 days of my, my, my decap, they sent me out on community service 
so 14 days before i was a danger to the public i was i was not i was um i was uh, someone who couldn't be released and in 14 days of doing community service i was now released from prison uh, and and i'm back in society and and i was okay so that that was that's the whole process of being reintegrated as far as charlie's concerned look, he's a very tough guy you know he this is a man who's done four years in solitary confinement um you know we know the you know the united nations uh have said like you know um being in solitary confinement is, is akin to, to torture you know, and they sent out a directive for, to all the countries around the world saying solitary confinement shouldn't go beyond 14 days now or 15 days. And that is from the scientific evidence. This guy's done mm. 40 years. He's, 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 uh, he's, uh, you know, if, if you know him, you've spoken to him, he's, uh, he's a very strong. He's, he, he's got a lot of interest in his art. Um, you know, most people that have done four years, you know, suffer from anxiety, depression, thoughts of suicidal thoughts. Um, you know, and, and and the majority of that, that uh, process is, is psychosis, delusions, um, hallucinations. And, you know, you know, anyone who's spoken to Charlie knows that he's he can see, you know, he can see a time when he's free, and and he, he's also very art, art, articulate in the way that he's actually. Uh, He's, he's actually uh, conveyed that to people. So, you know, I, I'd say that he, more than anyone I know, is one of the strongest people to do 40 years in solitary confinement. And I think I think he would breeze coming out of prison. And, of course, you know, he'd be, I'd be stupid to say he, he doesn't need any any uh, any help. You know, if he's got a strong a strong uh, network of people around him, uh, his, his friends that he can he can talk to, uh, I, I think he, he, would, he would get back in... Uh, uh, fairly easy. I don't. I don't think it's going to be any any trouble to someone if his caliber and his strength of mind. Okay, Anne. Good evening. What's What's your thoughts on on this? I mean, Charlie's never killed anybody. He's never murdered anybody. Um, he caused a lot of damage to mm. to prison um, and to Broadmoor in particular. Um, he took people hostage in prison. Staff, governors. He also took. Uh, some Iraqi uh, Iraqi terrorists uh, um, hostage as well, and um, sang to them and tickled their feet with feathers mm. back in the day. But that's behind them. The one thing I will say about Charlie, on, on you know, in the time that I've known him, I've known him twenty years, is he's owned his past. He's admitted that he's done wrong, and he's tried his very hardest to, to you know to, to to comply and do things. And and, and he's changed. And I, and you know, a lot of people have said that the TV show that was done last week was. It was detrimental to a chance of parole. Some people have said that the podcasts that I did for him, um, at his request, it has to be said, were detrimental. What other way had Charlie got to communicate to show people that he's actually sane? A lot of people doubted his mental health. They thought he was, he thought he was crazy. And, and let's face it, most people would be crazy locked behind a door 24-7, being fed through a hatch for 23 years like he was. But I've met him. I've spoken to him. I've corresponded with him for years. I genuinely think he has he has earned the right now to, to be able Definitely. to walk through those gates. But I believe it's got to be managed. It has to be done properly. You can't just put the poor man out and expect him to adapt to modern day life straight away. It has to be managed. But I'm not. I, I've got to be honest with the way I do these podcasts. I don't ask you all for your opinion beforehand. I've got a feeling what you might say, but I've invited you all on. So Anne, the floor is yours. Well, you've missed one thing out. Why was he originally put in prison? A robbery. Uh, not just a robbery, was it? Um, armed robbery. It was, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, this is the issue I have right now. I'm not saying that, you know, he shouldn't be released. He shouldn't give him a chance. But what gets right up my nose is when people start painting what are violent criminals who will cause in some of the victims. I mean, if you had a gun held to you, like having a chainsaw held to your neck like another person does did and laughs about. That can cause CPTSD in someone, and they have to live with that. And that's what you've got to understand. And mm. is he reformed? I don't know. I remember hearing your name. Um, you no, know, I have listened to your talks with him. And do you remember I said one of them wasn't convincing me when he was trying to tell the youth not to go into crime. It was all like, you know... You're gone, Dan. You're gone, Dan. And I thought, 
this isn't a person, this is a caricature. He's turned into a caricature of what <coughs> people want him to be like. And I thought it's not coming across as convincing. The issue I'd see with him being, you can't just release him. If you just release him after all that time, how's he supposed to cope? He, it would be like walking into an alien world 50 years ago. It was completely different, completely different. So it would have to be managed, but I don't buy this poor old man that people keep on saying, because I was listening to a, Eamon Holmes and someone else going on about it and saying, well, he didn't murder anyone, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. No, but he caused trauma in people. And mm. that's what you've got to take into consideration. So release him by all means, but don't release him on the fact that he's some kind of a poor little old man that's, you know, he's reformed and all this business, because we don't know that, for sure. We don't know. And apparently things that he said in the hearing didn't paint him in a good light, did it? The way he was phrasing himself. You'll never, and this change, you'll never, change, Char you'll never change Charlie Ann. You'll never change him for the way that he the way that he speaks and, and his, mm. his views on like he's very outspoken. It shows on, on the stuff that he's done over the years. Uh, but that doesn't make him a bad that doesn't make him a bad person. Um, well, yeah. Um, yeah, go on. Very briefly, I, I didn't want to take take down but so <clears throat> yeah, there are victims, of course, with most people mm. who crime who have done. But what people feel for Charlie is it of his age, or we're a forgiving nation, or we're a Haitian hell bent on punishment all the time, or working with people and showing them love or fashion it into it to get them to do what you want. Norway's a prime example of that. They've got the best economy for their, their living standards, uh, lowest crime rate, lowest reoffending. Why do we follow countries like Canada who do courses that aren't uh, a failed there when we're just starting them and they're reporting that they failed? But regards to Charlie, uh, and victim, there is, but how many? If I'm not just saying, over 48 years, how many paedophiles have been arrested and released, arrested and released, and arrested and released? If you said half a million over 48 years, okay, what are their victims gone? Now, of course, there's crimes out there that people are arguing there's people on the streets that shouldn't be there. The charge has 48 years of misbehaving in prison, but if you've got a set of in prison and a culture in prison that isn't like social society outside. And the prison system cannot protect you. And it's certainly failing me now that there's thousands of people like Charlie who haven't done as long, but have done exceedingly long times. It shouldn't be there now. The system isn't coping to release them. And that's why Charlie's in that state. He shouldn't have been in them blocks being sprayed with pepper spray, treating them human being like that because he's got a grievance. For well, in Argentina, you're trying to be four years for a prison officer, in England, seven weeks. That's the problem I think people have got. We've got a human body, a human soul in prison for 48 years because we haven't handled that man right or managed him to be released in society correctly. And that's my argument. You know, just, just, I just want to come in here just on top of what you just said there. You know, I, I remember um, John McVicker and Jimmy Boyle, um, you know, they were classed as dangerous um, and people that should never ever have been released. You know, and they, they were they were in fights. They, were, they, they had altercations with governors, screws. Uh, you know, people got their arms broken, black eyes, broken noses, everything. And anyone who's ever been in the block knows, you, knows that the brutality down the block is, is, you know, there's nothing compared to what happens on the wings. You know, you, you go down a block. It's a world within a world, uh, and, 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 brute, and 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 violence rules down there, and most of that violence comes from the screws. So I can understand why, 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 why Charlie is the way he is. You know, you know, he he is a he is a, he is a product of 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 a of a, of a, of a, a regime that that believed that they could they could sort of torture him into submission, and he and he and he never broke. You know, but he he's. You know, anyone who's been down the block and uh, for a few months would, would tell you that you know it's not a, it's not a place that you you know that you thrive in. It's not a place where you you, you want to gravitate back to. I mean, after three or four months in a block, you know you, you know you want to go back on, on the wing. You know this, he's been down there forty years. You know, uh, and, you know in, in, a, in a, he's 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 taken he took um he took someone hostage. You know, and and uh, that's regrettable. And I, I, I don't I you know it's not something that I you know that I you know, would would, uh, would agree with what he did, but you know the frustration that he felt from from being being uh, being CS gassed, being beaten, you know, and and not being heard, you know, uh, you, mm. can, you can you can you you can you know you, you, 
sometimes you get back to the corner in, when you're in prison. The only way to go is, is to do what you did. You know, if we if we if we look at the other side of the coin, you know, since 2000, the 2000 to 2006, 1,300 prison officers were found guilty of assaulting uh, prisoners and, and racial and racial discrimination and acts of, of violence on, on, on prisoners. Now, I think only one prison officer who actually broke his hand on a prisoner's head and jaw, uh, he got 18 months. You know, we're going to go, I'm going to go back to what you said uh, about um the trauma that, uh, that that people suffer from the hands of, of Charlie, but you know it's disproportionate to what the officers got. Eighteen months. The terrorists, the terrorists, the Iraqi terrorists, the, uh, who, who who took the plane, they're all out now. You know, uh, he he said, you know, I've I've done thirty five years, and you know what? I own it. I take responsibility for that. But for the last fifteen years, it seems that. It seems like the, the, the authorities just want to make an example of him, you know. And I think that's where our sympathy comes from, and 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 our and our and our will to see him freed, you know, because he has has gone past, you know, people that have, have killed their whole families have done 15 years and come out, rapists, paedophiles, you know, you know, uh, kill kids, do 15 years and come out. He's done 35 years for what he what he did, and he's had another 15 years on top of that. So, you know, that's, that's where our sympathy comes from. And that's why we want to see Charlie out. I think it was fair, fair comment as well. Just, just while it's in my mind, Phil Danielson, of course, is the, the prison officer who on many <coughs> occasions um, has been brought out to, to give his story. And, and, you know, rightly so. It was, he was traumatised. He had to leave the job. Um, but that documentary that uh, was, was made last week, uh, was was broadcast last week has, has been made over the last well took five years to put it all together um is the first time i've actually heard him say i think justice has been served so when yeah. phil danielson the victim of what has to be said probably the, the crime that's caused the most trauma um is actually... so you don't think anyone's saying he shouldn't be released i'm not saying that but what gets up my nose is when people are some it doesn't just happen to charlie i've seen it happen to other people the paint is some kind of oh, oh, oh. perfect yeah it's wrong the, the way things have happened. But at the end of the day, you know, I'll put my views. I always think of the victims first, then mm. I say put the offender second, they right second. Now, of course, that's not saying he should be kept in there, but if he's let out, he'll need to help a lot of support and he'll need mm. to now, There's no way on God's sake <clears throat> to get out of prison after all that time and be able to cope. He'll need coping mechanisms. So I'm not saying he shouldn't be released, but I just don't buy this, you know, trying to own the admission. And someone was in prison. Someone, well, did those people that were in prison have been released? Were the abducting people in the prison? Mm. Yeah, look, Ken, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Let's like, get like, a prison. Like, let's let, let's get a prison officer's um, prison officer's mm. view. Let's go at the bottom row. Um, Holly Gunn, you 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 wanted to make yeah, a objection then. I don't want you to lose that point. So you go. With it. Yeah, uh, only because I I've, I've only got till half seven maybe a bit longer because I'm off teaching yoga tonight. Um, so from my perspective, obviously, as an ex-governor, have, having managed people on segregation units for long periods of time, having been involved very heavily in public protection, high-risk prisoners, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my belief is that they management and I use the you know inverted commas are terrified of putting their name to any sort of you know any sort of reintegration back into normal population uh, you know working his way off the segregation unit I personally have never come across anyone that has been paroled given parole straight from <clears throat> segregation and bearing in mind, a lot of um, prison information obviously is fed into the parole hearing. And basically, that's the only information that they, they, they have to go on. And obviously, with his history, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, everyone, parole board, prison, anyone that's involved, probation, are, and, and excuse my French, but they're going to be shitting themselves because if he's released and puts one foot wrong, someone's head is on the chopping block. That's the bottom line. 
But in terms of my perspective, I do think he should be released. But I very much agree with Anne uh, in terms of he's been, you know, I don't know the guy, obviously, Steve, you do. Um, he's it's almost like the, he's this mythological anti hero. Um, and we forget that, yeah, there have been victims along the way. That's not say, that's not to say he shouldn't be released. I definitely think he should be released. I definitely think he should be given a chance. But I, um, listening, listening to you all about saying about his mental strength and, and stuff like that. I don't think anything can prepare you for the shock of moving out of segregation for so long and going into the normal world. And I personally don't know how that would be managed safely for him and for the general for the general public. Do you not um, think it would be easier for him to go straight into, I know, I know what you're saying, but rather than putting him back on a wing and having to do that step and show your worth on a wing, I think that would be far more dangerous than maybe just trying to put him into the community in a kind of safe house, stroke open conditions. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't think, I don't think crowds of people on a wing would necessarily no. be a good idea for him. I think that would be, you know, that would, that would be, there would be people that were out there to say, I've done Charlie Bronson, I've done this, yeah. I've done that. You know, I think that that would be dangerous for him. Um, I don't know how he would cope in a Cat D. Maybe a Cat D might be, you know, an option. But as we've just heard, you know, they don't necessarily do what needs to be done. I'm not sure what psychological sort of intervention that he's getting, whether he responds to that, whether he's engaged in any sort of therapy. But I do think there needs to be a lot of preparatory work and then a lot of support afterwards uh, with him being released. Like you say, you make some excellent points about people. There was uh, someone in the comments that said, you know, Gary Glitter was released after eight years. I mean, what, what the actual, yeah. you know what, you know what I mean? Um, and he does deserve a chance, but my feet, my, my gut feeling is that there will be, he won't be released. That's my gut feeling. From from a from a corporate management stance, mm. there will be no reprieve for him. Unfortunately, I think. I, I think, think it be I know you've only got about five minutes uh, left, Holly. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you the question. Do you think there will be some kind of progress? Because he's got to be given some hope. This isn't Dennis Nielsen. This isn't Peter Sutcliffe. This isn't Myra or, uh, Myra Hindley or Ian Brady. It's, you know, Charlie Salvador. Uh, he's become a I guess he's become the press's favourite column inch filler because yeah. it used to be the craze. And I know yeah, because yeah. obviously I knew yeah. the craze as well. I visited the craze in prison and, and those yeah. guys were, they're still to this day constantly making news, whether mm -hmm. it's a, a, a look back on days gone by, <coughs> a reference to somebody who's been in prison who could have been compared to the new craze, whether it's a new film. Whether it's a new book by an old an old friend, whether it's the death of Nipper Reed recently, you know, it, yeah. there's always a headline about the craze. Now, Charlie's the same, and mm -hmm. Charlie Charlie does, as we all know, um, he does like it. He does like the publicity. He does like mm. he does like the the notoriety. Is he being a little bit of a victim of that? Is that looked will that be looked down on by the parole board, or do they have to push that to one side, Holly? Um. I, I do think that impacts mm. on how he would behave following release. If you are courting attention, if you are courting publicity, um, is that going to continue? You know, if that continues on the outside, there there may be some sort of risk involved in that. I mean, there may not be. He may, you know, he he may come out. Do interviews get you know get some really positive you know feedback? Yeah, he, wouldn't, or... he wouldn't be the first, would he? I mean, if his name was John Smith, I, I try and look at it laterally. If his name was John Smith, would we be having this conversation? No, we wouldn't. No, you know, no. that's, that's not to take away from you know the crime that he's committed and whatnot. But we're talking about John down the street. He's already been given a chance in the community, and the reason why he isn't is because of the systems and the forces and the prison service. It's their insecurity 
why they're not going to give him a chance, I think. Well, if, if you think some of the most re recent sort of really serious child rape murders that yeah. have been given 35-year <laughs> tariff, tariffs, 35-year tariffs for a child rape and murder, yeah. and he's done 48 years, just doesn't make sense to yeah. me. Yeah. You know, it's just not, it's not right. Um so yeah, I, in in some way, I but I personally, I think it's it's because the situation is so unique. We we've not had this situation before. I mean, uh, I mean maybe when I think it, we, I can't remember which of the craze died first. You know, there was all the hoo ha oh, about God. attending the funeral and stuff like that. I personally think. The, the risk management side of it, sorry for the, the technical talk, the risk management side of it would be very, very difficult. But but like I said, how can a child murderer, a child rapist be given 35 years and then someone who has not done the most heinous of crimes yeah. be still in prison for 48 years? Well, it's, it's, right, it's not right. Canada, you and I and you do less time than a paedophile paedophiles crimes in Canada some years ago now as well, over 20, 30 years ago, they considered that bad as course as they are. Their sentences were imposed that they weren't released back into society as quick to harm children or women or men or whoever again. That is the point that I think a lot of people in this country have a serious problem with. The criminal justice system has risk assessments and, and such in place for serious sex offenders and many other crimes that where people should not be on the street and they are. Now, Charlie's mm. cases are prison committed. And because they're prison committed and this behaviour, he's doing this, what he does in prison, he'll do when he's released. Excellent, you have to consider that. But on the reactionality side of that, he hasn't been released into a normal, where he can just, hasn't got the door open for him. Mm. He's at an age now where he can approach him with zero uh, uh, possibility of him being violent again, as you get to 70, they reckon he's zero. Of course, he's got those factors to be considered still. But everybody keeps going on about what he's done in prison. Why don't we see yeah. how he gets, gets out? But I do think there should be a release plan. And that, I think it's Warren Hill that I mentioned earlier. Um, and they integrate you back with around people who are long term and such. What you yeah. want to is not going to work. Put him in a place with a big house like Lantar House in its day, but a little bit smaller. That would work. Mm -hmm. on, get my hat on. Get Levington would work for him. That's just a tiny little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's touch like that. There's no reason why he can't be released. What about Terry Wayne? He got released. I've been sitting in a room for nine years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is such a bad comparison. <laughs> yeah, and what I meant was he was locked in a room himself under torture and such. Same as Charlie, but of course. You know, okay, you understand, isn't it? He got it I got released after 20 years. I was like a sponge. I couldn't wait for society. I absorbed it with, with great speed and just different kind of bins and different kind of cars and food <laughs> and stat nap and memorable information. I was still doing that four years later with memorable information. I just didn't have a clue. It was like a new language. So confusing with computers and that. But here I am today. I'm a law abiding citizen. <coughs> conducting a life where I think I'm giving something back to the community. And I believe Charlie can do exactly the same if he's around the right people and released into society where it yeah. can be simply managed. Where he's got the right people around him to keep things calm and keep him away from problems. Risk assess it really well for the people who've got the right intentions for him. If you're going to do a talk, do it at Cambridge University. You ain't going down the fucking Albert Arms. All right? So let's be, that has to be considered. And if he gets that right, I think it's, it's, it's coming to society very easy. I'm sorry for taking the platform. No, 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 it's fine. I, go on. I'm going to have to go, folks. Well, Molly, well, thanks very much for your input. I would I would love to stay and chat. Don't forget the downward uh, dog. Uh, we'll be downward dogging for at least get an hour. get locked up for that. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, yeah. Holly. Yeah. See you soon. Nice to see you guys. <laughs> see you later. Yeah, I stay. You know, as you say, it's a unique situation, so it needs a unique solution, yeah? You know, he's been to Rampton, Broadmoor and Ashworth, yeah? 
And all, all them prisons, you know, I think they, you know, I brought my three hundred thousand pounds a year to keep an inmate. You know, it goes down to two hundred, two fifty, and then you go to a, a B cat, which is about one hundred and twenty, um, and then a C cat, which is you know a bit less, and then a D cat is about forty thousand quid a year. And the, and the trouble with prison is that when you actually need that money and that help is when you leave, they give you twenty three pound fifty and put you on a dole. So you know, mm-hmm. the, a unique. We need a unique solution for a unique person and a unique whatever. Yeah, and I think they should they should spend some of that money in in, in setting up a, a program for Charlie where they can put him in uh, accommodation, where they can have someone or, or or people there that could could integrate him back into society. I don't think a DCAT is going to be any good to him because you know I've I've been to a few DCATs in my life and they are not worth. You know, they're not worth nothing. You know, they're just they're just smoking mirrors for the public. You know, at the end of the day, they're a carrot for anyone who's been in prison. You know, at the end of your sentence, you'll go to a DECA and everything's going to be hunky dory and you're going to get this and that, but you get you get nothing. You the know, all you get- will say, mate, about the DCATs, just just oh. on that, I agree with what you're saying because I ended up in a DCAT <clears throat> having worked in the prison service. The only thing I will disagree with is that what did you think of the home leaves and the town leaves every week? Because the home leaves are really, in my eyes, what's reintegrating you back into some kind of life you know what we had so much so much shit from the omu and and our personal officers you know i yeah. spent i spent 12 months there and, and in the last three months they actually cleared me and i, and I went home for christmas you know and right. so many guys get messed around for the omus you oh, know yeah, I, yeah. I think in in the whole year that i was in uh, um, spring hill 300 men actually decided to go back to prison because it was so bad they were bored yeah. there was no work and you know what? A DCAT is a lottery. You know, this this if there's six hundred prisoners in, in six hundred prisoners in an open prison, yeah. Yeah. You know, if you get there at any one time, you have to have three hundred prisoners in the prison to to to, to make it work. So if, yeah. if you get there after that three hundred have gone out to work, then you have to wait until all of them have, have, have lost their jobs or whatever, yeah. which normally is not the case. You normally do twelve months, you know, and then you get nothing. And what they they have they're obligated to give you uh, 14 days, which is two weeks, community service, and that's supposed to reintegrate you back into society. It's, yeah, it's, it's a lot it's more milling around. There's a lot yeah, more it's, milling it's, around, mate. There's no routine. It's basically look <laughs> after yourself. And if you've got nothing good. to do, I mean, that's what, in prison, that's what people struggle with, as you know, coming out of the yeah. routine. So, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that would be conducive to to uh, Charlie's mental health or well-being yeah. going now. You know, in fact, it's it taking backwards. As it said, he, he, needs, he needs structure. He needs people that will support him, a good support network. And we can only do that by investing in his future. And the only, the only way you can do that is spend some of the money that they, that they, they, they have to keep him in prison to help him keep him out. Of you've got there, mate, is, the only problem you've got there is if you give it to Charlie, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? If Charlie gets it, we all know the society we live in where, you know, we all, you know, yeah. sue the arse off people or whatever. If Charlie gets it, you will also automatically have half a million people wanting it. And yeah. the lawyers will be yeah. all over it. Go on, Terry, sorry. Yeah, we have, we have, we, you know, we put people in witness protection. You have uh, the, the, the guys that killed that young kid up in Liverpool. Uh, mm. They, they get, they get, they get um, false identities. They get housing. They yeah. get everything. You know, so it, it can be done. It's, it's a fallacy to say it mm. can't be done. He can't, he can't get the support or the help he needs because of money. There are, there are organisations and institutions that uh, that would mm. bend over backwards to see Charlie succeed because it would be in their best interest. Yeah, and, you yeah, know, I, I, I think that, that, that prison governor uh, now did in. You know, I don't know any any uh, psychiatric uh, hospital or therapeutic prison in the country that has actually said that a man is, is okay to leave prison because it's, it's, it goes against their narrative and their mantra. You know, they, they know because as soon as one person leaves prison that they said, we believe that this guy is OK and he then commits an offence, they go back to square one. And they won't have they, 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 the, the, the powers that be will not have that. And this, this is why he will never, ever be cleared to, to, to leave there. So he needs he needs a, a completely different uh, release plan than most prisoners and something that's going to support him and set him up to succeed instead of fail. A unique release plan. That that's yeah. that is key. Bobby, you've listened uh, intently, and I know that's sometimes right. you sometimes come on here and you say, "I feel a bit out of place." Well, tonight's probably one of those nights because obviously we've all got something to say on this one. I'm interested in having you on, Bobby. You've always got an opinion on stuff. 
you, you'll have you'll have seen the news. You'll have you'll have over mm-hmm. the years and, and watched, uh, you know, watched the various uh, incarnations from Michael Peterson to uh, you know to Charlie Bronson to uh, Charlie Arnold <coughs> and now to Charlie Salvador. Um, you know, what, what what's your take on the situation he's in? Well, um, Charles Salvador, we'll call him because that's what he currently calls himself, is a unique character. Um, do I think he should be let out? I don't think he should be in prison. Um, do I think he will be? Not a chance. I don't think there'll be a chance. Forget your parole boards. He is one of um, three times I can pick. I can think of when um, people have challenged the authorities, and for the authorities to lose, they would look foolish. There was the great train robbers in the sixties. There was the craze. Now there's Charles Bronson or Salvador, all gave given long sentences because they challenged the authorities. Now that the powers that be will not bow down to this and, and they will they will see that as being um a loss if the, if that happens. Um now Charles 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 is a um a unique character. This guy can't be let out um and just left, you know. We all want to, th- you know, if this guy wants to go live in a small, you know, little cottage and paint for the rest of his life, he's 70 now. Um, he was locked up, was it 1974, 75? Um, all them years, he comes out, he's going to be a celebrity. There's no doubt about it. He's a big character. He isn't going to come out in a, to a peaceful life. He's going to need guidance, a lot of guidance um, and protection in many ways. Uh, do I think... Um, I don't. I just don't not think he's going to happen. Uh, it's sad to say, um, but I think he's a victim of the system. But yeah, he hasn't exactly. helped. He hasn't helped himself. He's challenged the system for many years. Now, the, what makes him unique is, like I've said with the other two in, uh, examples, I know. I know kids in the twenties who know who Charles Salvador is. That makes him quite unique. Who know who the crazy are. Um, and these are bigger than life characters, uh, and they, they come out to he come out tomorrow. The media is going to be uh, just going to you know he's not he's not going to have a, he's life. Got a decent earning potential, mate. If he comes out, he has, decent, yes, with, with a decent but, PR manager, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He's not like he's, a normal prisoner, like you say. He's got potential to yeah. hit the ground running. But at the same time, he's got to you know he's 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 been conditioned. He, you know mm. he's 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 a victim of his his surroundings. Um, how is he going to change that? How is he going to? Ch- how is he going to adapt at the same time as having all this pressure on him? You know, like you said, John Smith comes out, he's left alone. Um, you know, I, I I don't watch I don't watch any of the documentaries regarding him, mm. um, because but I do. I think people go on what they hear in the media, um, what they get the stories there for the likes of uh, Steve who who knew who knows him personally, you know. We, that's all we can base it on. We don't actually want know what the guy is like one to one. You know, I, I don't. Th- obviously, no one spent twenty four hours with the guy, have they? That's the I'm point. No one knows what it's like. Oh, I'm not saying he's a bad oh, guy in the slightest. Oh. Um, I think he's a victim of the system, and you know he's institutionalized. To put him out in the in the in the, in the it'd have to be very very careful, uh, a very structured you know procedure to bring this Has guy. Has he got out. much family, Steve? Yeah, I mean, he's got people out there. He's got um, he's got people who, who could obviously take him in. His mother's still alive, although she's at the uh, right. you know the the later stages of her life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, by her own admission in the documentary, if she, if he went and stayed with her, she'd keep him in a cage. Um, but but joking aside, he, you know, he does have his son. His son has suffered over the years with with uh, mental health issues, so right. you know he couldn't look after him. Um, of course, Irene Dunro, his former missus, is is on the outside. Um, you know, he he has a sister who um, sadly doesn't speak to. But other than that, you know, he, he, he you know, it, it would be very much a case of a managed, you know, managed release. Oh, yeah. He would be fending for himself, really. He's a one-off. He's, he's unique. He's a one-off. It's not. It's, it, they would have to have. You know, it, it'd take a very special team to be able to manage this guy, uh, so that he's he lives a you know content happy life. Um, he's seventy years old. He's probably got 10, 15 years. 20 years at a push. He's, uh, he's a fit old lump, mind. I'm telling you now. Yeah. I mean, we're um, all about the same height, but by the way, he, he is very thick set. 
It's you know, he's, he's the type of guy that the journalists to send helicopters up for. You know, he's that kind of. He's the type of guy yeah. that they they could make big money off this guy. So it, I would I would manage him. That's what I'm saying. If he came out, I no, don't I, think I, he should I, be out. I would yeah. manage him by I keep him away from the press and people as much as I could for a good six months, mm -hmm. and I'd get him living in the deepest, darkest woods somewhere. Okay, but well, he's got a report to. Uh, probation officer up in the bleeding, in, 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 up somewhere in the Lake District. He lives in the middle of nowhere with a team around him or one or two people. And you know what? Let that man find himself again. Let that man find yeah. fresh, fresh air and calmness. And then if you stick him somewhere where he can live, and it is in the bloody in the middle of Dartmoor, he wouldn't care as long as he can paint and, and stuff. But you just bear this in mind, please. There is a release plan that he could quite easily be adapted to, but it's for where you put him and who you put him with. Simple yes. as that. Okay? Yes. And it hasn't got to be his man as manic as people the same. Because you would get reporters going to see him, but they can be ushered away with a couple of vegan yelping dogs. But nonetheless, what I mean is, is Charlie is one of thousands in the system. And you're going to have many more going up to the numbers that he is at. Because I was a product of the system if I'd have been in the mainstream system. This is very worthy of the point I make. I know, Charlie, I've done time with him. Mm -hmm. So if I hadn't been in the special secure units, the staff at the time that was threatening to kill me said, we'll kill you later and get dead down here. I only took the morning to one of them. said, don't talk to me, you're a con. And they were, gives us a stretch. So I'm a polite fella. So because the, the staff who worked in the unit had to be security cleared, nobody else come in that unit unless the bell went. And then they all come running over from the wings. If I had a problem with that member of staff who was threatening to ki kill me or hit me or whatever, for no blooming reason, you had staff testify to that fact, but nonetheless, it's also good in the job. If I'd have sorted that member of staff on the mainstream prison system, I'd have gone into the segregation and I'd have been met by a waiting committee. I would then be a product of society. And my point is this. I'm here now. But because mm -hmm. I had the problems with the staff in the units, I was wrapped up, bent up, zip tied, stripped, and put in block in, in a strip cell. Okay, and I, there was no heavy handedness as such. You know, you get a beating, whatever. But I would have been like Charlie, but here I am now in front of you. Okay, and I've, I've led successful businesses, and uh, I am a, I'm in the community doing a lot for the community. I'm not saying Charlie can do exactly like me, but. I would have been like Charlie now because I wouldn't have forgotten. And I'm known for that in the prison system. Many of them schools used to go over the end and I'm going to get you the first chance I get. Do not worry about that. And I would, all right, because they stamped on my head or bleeding, standing on my throat and stuff like that. Um, but I'm here in front of you. Yeah. What's got to sort this system out, folks? Yeah. You know, do, 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 can I just ask, you know, this recent parole he had and, and the, 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 statement he made to this parole board do you think he's given up do you think he's just totally given up because then the, the, the statement I'll he made you, i'll give you my view from, from 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 yeah. speaking to him throughout the COVID period we, we we made a deliberate pact to do those interviews and to release them uh drip feed them to put them mm -hmm. out there to show that he was saying um and from my perspective you know i personally feel that charlie's a realist and he knows that you know in, in, in the grand scheme of things, this is progress. And it's not just progress for him. It's progress for other inmates who come after him who should have a public parole hearing so that it's not done behind closed doors, not done out of sight of anything else. Uh, because, you know, where Charlie was fighting for the rights, a bit like when Alan Lord and the lads went on the roof at Strangeways, they were fighting for their civil rights within prison. The place, is, the place was, was horrendous. They were, they were living in horrendous facilities and they made that protest and went on the roof to try and get change. And the prison system was changed because of Strange Ways Riot. I believe on a lesser extent, this is what Charlie's trying to do with this. Do, do I believe that Charlie thinks he's going to get out? In my heart of hearts, no. I think Charlie realises he's not going to get out. The best he could hope for is this public parole hearing so that everybody can see it's transparent. Mm. They've now got two or three weeks to think about it after... Well, once the final day happens this week, they'll go away and they'll make the decision and they'll come back. But the fact that it's all in the public eye means nothing can be slept, swept under the carpet. The mm. media will be asking questions. He's got all of this publicity. And generally, whatever, whatever decision they come to, they'll have to give a reason. It'll be a reason that's out in the public eye. It won't be swept away. Now, that's a unique opportunity. And I generally think Charlie will be happy with that. I think 
he's institutionalized beyond you know beyond yeah, yeah. you know well, I was going to say Kevin and, and Terry was you know I think I think he, I think he's happy in, in a lot of ways he's got his exercise yeah. he's got his yeah. you know he's got his out but I tell you what if he got if he got an opportunity to come out as well he'd be over the moon but it Listen, he's managed. screaming to get out do not worry about that inside yeah. him he's <laughs> screaming to get out right yeah. just because he's he's him him out. That, heart, that little hope in his heart is in there and he's pumping away and I can tell you now and so can Terry he, yeah. you want to be hey, out. Do you know what you said there, Steve? He, he just right? making the best of the situation. Perry, can I just say this? Because, yep. you know, you're all taking up a lot of the uh, broadcast. Um, you know, when you turn around and said about um, him, you know what, he may be, he's institutionalised and he might not want to come out. One thing that got me, and I thought it was very sad in a way, was when he said, Oh, I can go out and make earnings from the paintings, which is a good thing, you know. He's thinking I can make earnings from the paintings, so I can yeah. go out and do that. But I don't know. I get the feeling the way he was saying himself. Yeah, he wants to get out, but at the same time, I don't know if the person thinks I'm not going to. Yeah. You know what I'm getting? I'm not. But I stress again: no one's saying he should not get out. It should. But I should yeah. say this public parole hearings. My God, I agree with you 100% that all parole hearings should be done in the public mm. because yeah. then you know whether corruption's happening or not. Things in prison are very, uh, well, mm. exactly what you've said there. Especially someone with his track record with in the prison system and hurting prison staff, etc. Mm. There will be no doubt bias, and we all know it. it. You know, it's not right, but there will be bias, even if it's from probation or wherever you want to call it. It's, it's just natural, isn't it? So they should be done publicly. They should be done fairly. But, you know, I, 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 I don't know nobody in the system who's been in solitary or in prison don't want to come out. You know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy to think that he wants to be in now. You know, you know, he's better placed than anyone I know. You know, he, he's his original crime was monetary, yeah? It wasn't, yeah. He's not a predator. He's not, not a murderer. He's not a paedophile. He's not a rapist. It was monetary, you know? I don't believe in rehabilitation. I don't think it works, period, yeah? But what I do believe, if you can change a man's circumstances, if a man can come out and he's got money and he's he's better placed than anyone else to earn money from his books, from his painters and everything else, mm -hmm. then he will he will, he will will come back into society and he will live like a normal person. It's only when you haven't got any money and you haven't got a support network that you're more likely to revert back to type to get that. You know, the biggest evil in this fucking world is, is money. And yeah. he... He will earn money and over fist from from the films, from books, uh, from podcasts, yeah, everything. Yeah. You know, so he ain't, he ain't gonna have no, no problem with that. So I, I, think, you know, we, I think we get the, the the public opinion overall. I think is that you know he's done his time. He needs to, he needs to be you know left to live the rest of his life in peace. Um, but I personally think it's an higher authority that's keeping him there. I think mm. they feel as though he, he's making mock taking you know making a mockery of the system. And they, they make an examples the same way I said it with the craze and with the, the great train robbers. You know, that's what I think he's just a victim of that. But he but he was he was made by you know the sixties, seventies, and eighties and early nineties. Prison was a completely different place. You know, it's not like it is today. We're talking about brutality. We're talking about oh, incredulous yes. violence towards, towards inmates on a, on a daily basis, where, mm -hmm. where violence was 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 the only thing. You know, so you know. It, he 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 is he is only known violence. You know, he went in as as a young twenty one year old kid, yeah, mm -hmm. and and all he's come against is an immovable object in a system that you know were, were all ex army, you know, and the only thing they knew was violence. You know, I you know, I've been in a block. I've had a broken. I've had three broken ribs. I've had a busted shoulder. I've had a broken nose. I've had enough black eyes in the block. And that's and as as Kevin just just said, that's just the saying good morning. You know, mm -hmm. so and I know that that. that, that that Charlie has been through so much more than me. He's been gassed, right. he's been beaten, you know, and for him to come out and, you know, look, we are, we've all got logic, we've all got understanding, yeah? I know, I was, I was doing 18 years and I was down a block, yeah? I knew that if I started smashing screws, you know, I would I would get another four years, another five years, another 10 years. So, you know what? I held back and refrained. I covered up and I, and I, and I went down and I let them do what they wanted and that was it. You know, they got their pound of flesh. So can I ask? Can I ask you guys who've been in front of parole boards? I, yep. don't, I don't get. I don't get why he behaved like he did. That's you know what? You have to can remember you, that. Can you understand what he was doing? 
Yeah, but you, what you've got to remember, he was 21 years old when he went into prison. Right, he, right. He, hasn't had no, he hasn't had no room inside prison to 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 educate himself to a high level. He's around people uh-huh. that are in their 20s. And you know what? He's not even around people in the 20s. He's in solid confinement. He's not yes. speaking to anyone. The only thing that he is, is doing, he's very creative. He's doing lots of art. But yeah. he, he doesn't have conversation with, with officers. The only people that he, he actually speaks to are probably the odd psychologist that comes down now. You know, so right. he's had he's had no he's had no room in there to advance his education, right? Uh, right. Either to be articulate his social skills. Yeah. He stayed in one position. He's a, he's by all means a twenty one year old seventy year old man. You know, yeah, his social skills are, uh, uh, yeah. his social skills have been put on hold. If you like, he won't so, have any social skills. But so he, he, he's, he's a product of the system. He's a product of the devil. system. Yes. Maybe. Oh, yes. Yes. Just yes. to play devil's advocate there, mate. If he. I mean, I don't know the guy. I've seen bits. If we think that he's an intelligent man, you two, you guys know him. I don't. Would you not have thought at some point that he would have thought, hang on a minute, they're obviously playing me like a fiddle here and I'm doing everything that's feeding them that shite? At mm. one point, he must have sat there in, you know, at some point in his sentence and thought, well, I tell you what, I'll flip reverse it and I'll just start towing the line and then we'll see what, after maybe parole hearing one, two or three, somebody must have got him down and said, right, let's change tact here, pal. Right. Sorry, Sorry. one second. Sorry, buddy. It's, it's, some people just get caught up in a system of violence and mm. help I won't let you beat me. I won't, you're not going to do that to me. That's the way mm. they're made. So you, you, these people should have been treated differently. We shouldn't have so much violence in terms of how we deal with difficult situations with an inmate in front of you. And if we had a system where it was more that way inclined, you wouldn't have such retaliation from these inmates. So he becomes yeah. heavily entrenched in his thought pattern, and I will not be beat. And as in, probably sometimes now he, he says things like, I have no regrets. I have my life, I've been dealt those, whatever hands I've been dealt with, I live my life. I can understand what he's saying there. But because he's right. not used to saying something passionate to staff or in relation to the criminal justice system, he may come out and say, I've got no regrets. What he may have liked to have said deep down inside, which he might have said yeah. he walking around the field six months later and said, you know what? I've done some things that I wouldn't have wanted to cause some harm to some of the people. But because yeah. of who he is at the minute and where he's speaking from, you're getting a certain response because he's living in that uh, at the time, and he's heavily entrenched. So there's a lot of that to be considered in how he answers people. But inside mm-hmm. him, very kind man, and I know it's yeah. violent, it's problematic. It's a problematic of ADSG or something like that. Okay, But he's now an yeah, adult. Yeah, yeah. The man... You know, you know, you know. I, I think he, yeah, he did wake up. I think he woke up in 1999. Yeah, that was his mm-hmm. last time he he done anything. And since 1999, he ain't done anything. He's done his art. He sends his art out to help kids. He, he supports lots of lots of charities and everything else. He hasn't done anything since 1999. That's 23 years. You know, that's a lot of time to think. I think he woke up yeah. 23 years yeah. ago. You know. And at the, at the same time, fair, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know. And that, at the but... same time, as you as you stated. You've got guys who, who are uh, taking control of him that have minimal training, like you said, seven yeah. weeks. But it, these these aren't these these guys aren't trained to, to deal with a guy that's been in solitary for so many years. So it, it's all screwed up. Everything's screwed up. Our solitary yeah. system. That's what he's been in. He's been in the British solitary system. So why don't we look at other solitary systems in other countries, like I said, Norway, and see how they reintegrate people or get them back living a normal life. <coughs> Do we have to be that hell-bent, hang you and persecute you and torture you because you are a criminal? The best people in the world sometimes are criminals who have made a mistake and they stand up for the, the decency of people and go on to do better and greater things. doesn't mean they're, they're terrible people because they've been in prison. I mean, the best of the best and the worst of the worst. So you I know, think sometimes we should be given a chance and look how we're treating our society very briefly. We've got thousands of people in charge position and we're going to have to deal with it at some point. So we better get yeah. it right pretty soon. You have all the IPP lads, don't forget. Yeah, it's, it's ironic, yeah, that after nearly 48 years in prison, yeah, and treating him like an animal, they're actually considering putting him into a special unit where they can treat him like a human being. That's crazy. You know, really? if they would have treated him like a human being in the first place, yeah, he would never have been in 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 the, in the situation you know now. You know, he, he you know, he, you know, no man that I know has been down that block, yeah, uh, and 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 come out of the way he has. You know, he, you know, he, he, you know, we we're talking about the seventies, the eighties, the nineties, when when 
when uh, savage physical violence was 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 the name of the game, and and that's all he's yeah. been used to. Yeah. And they they corrupted him and they turned him into a monster. Yeah, and they have the audacity to then turn around and say he's he's, he's dangerous. You know, it's crazy. You know, so, um, but, he had I, but the he thing is, just some people just answer me this, Teddy yes. Rice. He can't be the only one that ever had officers coming at him and brutalizing him. <laughs> so why is it that? Some of the others, or the majority, vast majority of us, had the sense to think, wait a minute, you know, I'll like what Lee said, I'm not going to give them what they want. I know people are doing things. Uh, sorry, Anne, there's quite a few in the system that don't get reported on. I think that's so notorious as Charlie, but I have the problem that Charlie has that goes around the merry go round system. And that's yeah. the IEP system, they've got him doing. Two years of doing 11, 12, 13. Yeah, that's what I said years. before, Kev, the IPP. John Massey, John yeah. Massey, loads yeah. of them, there's loads of them in there. Yeah. And 40 years and things like that. And unfortunately, the system is not, it's not, it's not able to cater for what, what's going on in there. So there's going to be a lot of people like Charlie, and there is a lot of people like Charlie already. Yeah, I think they, they signal Charlie out. Uh, the media has, has to take responsibility yeah. for this as well. You know, they, 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 they've made him into a celebrity criminal, um, you know, gave him no notoriety. I think they have to take the blame for this. You know, some of the stuff that they've written over the years is is, is scandalous. It's, it's, it's fictional. It's, 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 you know, it's, none of it's true. But yet they put him in week after week after week. And, you know, and they they they're keeping his name up there. They're keeping they're keeping his his whole you know his old life still is making it current. He hasn't done anything since 1999. He hasn't had no trouble, no fights. He's not kidnapped anyone. He's not held anyone hostage since 1999. That's like 20, nearly 24 years. You know, he hasn't done anything. So you know, he deserves to come out now. You know, he's there's a, no. He's a victim. Back. You're certainly right there. He's a vi yeah. he's a victim of, of of that media that was portrayed years ago. The Birdman of Broadmoor, prime example. That's what they used yeah, to call yeah. him. I mean, he's changed yeah. his name a lot. It's all about you know Char Charlie knows how to play the game, play the media game. As Lee said, you know when he comes out, he's a license to print money. Uh, mm. But that that in itself brings a problem. Could be you know, a problem. Kevin, yeah, exactly. Kevin's, going Kevin's, to be Kevin's come out and they're scared. Himself, they're himself scared to let the guy out. They're scared to let him out. He's yeah, vocal. Yeah. He's very yeah, vocal. He's, he, it shouldn't be a case of, of the authorities are scared. It shouldn't be a case of, of, of treating him like any differently. It shouldn't be a, a, a case of making Correct. an example of him. It should be a case of, of his we merits. Know, we all know there's corruption at the top. Yeah. But we, it should be, his release should be based on his merits. You know, yes. he hasn't done anything since 1999. That right. in itself is it shows me that he's 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 thinking he's thinking about the consequences of his action. He's a, he hasn't attacked any officers. He hasn't attacked any inmates. He hasn't even attacked a psychologist. And if you've well, met if a can, psychologist in prison, if he you'll can, know if that. He can, if he can sustain 23, 24 years, you know, uh, that, sure that's a to. tremendous amount of time for anybody to show that yeah. they're a yeah. changed, you know, or they've calmed or whatever. You know, it's a tremendous, but I do think that, it, you know, he's too vocal for the. If, if, if he was a quiet man, I think they'd, they'd look at it different. And he's oh, sad yeah. to see because I don't think he should be in prison. But yeah. what, how, I don't, how do they? I don't think, he, I don't think he, should, he should be judged for doing a bit cocky uh, oh. and, a, and a, you know just a bit jolly. You know, he's yeah. he said I've had more porridge than the than Goldilocks or the Free Bears. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you know, in, you know, <laughs> the one good thing you have in solitary confinement where you have a, a camaraderie with the, the five or six guys on your unit, yeah, because right. you talk through the wall. You know, the only thing that keeps you going is humour. And it's and it's mm -hmm. very dark humour, you know. And uh, you know, you could be. I, I you know, I've, I've said I've, I've sat there with black eyes, broken nose. I've had busted ribs, and I've sat there and we've laughed about it because that's all you've got in the block. That's right. all you've got. Well, what well, he needs to do, though, this is it. And uh, I've been in a situ in situations where you've been up against authority, and you have to quickly work out what do they want me to do, what do they want me to say to get what I want out of um, this. And you have to wait that out. And then, and they even know, I, they knew I was more or less fishing for what they wanted and giving them the answers they wanted to hear. Now, that sounds, which I thought was, why are they, do you have to source? Like, it's like bootlicking, isn't it? You've got to tell them what they want to hear. But Charlie, I think that's what's, what was sad about what was coming out. He was talking, like, as you said, uh, teenager or someone in the 20s he is a teenager. that's yeah. what that's what was like a what do you about it do i think he'll get out 
actually, Bobby, I do think he will get out. I do. I've got right. a suspicion he will do get right. out. Can I just add a comment, please? So when we talk about the the, the uh, jury and the attention, that that also kept Charlie alive because unfortunately, yeah. whenever you look at it, it's something that has fed him his strength to keep going and the passion mm, yeah. used in, 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 in an adverse way or a positive way, but it's been used against him in an adverse manner. But that's all he's had to keep him going. And I think that that's all he knows. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, you know, he's, he's he's written a few books there. He's he's written fitness books. He's very charismatic. You know, and 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 I've been I've been uh his he's, 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 he's time on the podcast in the paper, you know, it, it gives him something to do. You know, as long as he's, he's, he's alive out there or out here, mm. it gives him something to look forward to. <clears throat> you know, it gives him much, you know, he knows that he, he can, he's, he's got to come out. You know, for me, it's, it's a, I think it's, it's a travesty. I think it's, it's an insult to, to every single person in prison. You know, I don't know if, if, if any of you guys know about the IPP system, yeah? Yeah. The IPP yeah. system was introduced here by by Blunkett, yeah, and it, it, it was uh, it was introduced from America. Um, it didn't work over there, so what we did, we took the same format and we brought it over here, knowing that most of the guys couldn't reach that 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 benchmark. Yeah. Now we've got six thousand five hundred uh, IPP prisoners uh, who, who only got like two years and five years. Now who's done ten, yeah. eleven, and fifteen oh, yeah. years? Yeah. They're being tortured. You know these guys. You know, I, you know, I said what. Since 2010, yeah, to 2018, 3,500 prisoners leaving prison have committed suicide. You know, yeah, that's, yeah. One, that's basically one every single day. No investigation, no accountability, no judicial review. You know why? Because no one cares. That's, that's why. Well, that's the cruel reality of society. They yeah. generally don't. They don't care about a hell of a lot of things like the um, people that you say that get out of prison with chill sentences, people don't care. That's the way so, it is. Exactly. That... So no one so no one cares. That's why he has to do that's why he has to do the, the Channel Four uh, programs. That's why he has to do Steve's uh, podcast. That's why he has to come on here all the time. That's well, why that's he has to put his name up. Otherwise that's... he would just disappear into oblivion. Yeah, you know, he's he, a necessary I evil. know what you're saying, but that can go against him. I've always you said know what? If, people, you know I know guys that short don't and keep it... years. Yeah. yeah. But... Yeah, the best thing is to keep your mouth shut and keep your head down. You know what? Because there are guys that keep their mouth shut in prison, yeah, and they're still languishing in solitary confinement. I know, you know, Johnny Massey, forty-five years. You know, uh, you know, he he actually went out and his and his and his dad was dying, yeah, and he and he actually went to his dad's hospital bed, and when he went back to his hospital that night, they recalled him. He, I done, I done a, a robbery in eighteen years. He got a recall. And done more on a recall than what I did for the robbery, and you know, and that guy has got no notoriety, no no uh, no publicity, but done forty five years. So, you know, you're you're fucked if you do, and you're fucked so if you what, don't. So, what 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 can be done? What can be changed to help these guys? Bobby, do you know what we what people, public, in public hearings. We are all yes, we are exactly Lee. But the thing is, we have to understand that we're all made differently, and how yes. I respond is different to how we all respond in front of us, pretty much in some degree. Now, there's a, a, a certain amount of people in prison that don't have the wherewithal to do what we're saying, keep your mouth shut. Now, they're just not made up like that. They may, be, mm -hmm. may have a, a attention deficit orders and all sorts of difficulties or hand in being in prison for 13 years and only came in doing three. Mm -hmm. And it might be for punching someone, if punch someone twice, we've got an IPP, but they're not real maniacs. But they've got a, a, a license around them that has imprisoned them for a silly amount of years and taken their life away from them. They break and they become a product of the system. You know, yeah. Right. You know, I, I think you know we've 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 all known for years and years that the rehabilitation in its present form doesn't work. You know, uh, the service providers are earning vast sums of money from from people that are incarcerated. Um, the people that should do the rehabilitation should be. Um, the prison officers, the, the governors, uh, not not uh, um, not civil servants. We should take the politics out of prison, and we should let the people that actually know about prisons and understand them do their job. That's what needs to be done. But Unfortunately, you can only rehabilitate someone by introducing them back out into society. In no, 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 I no. Think so you because you rehabilitate you someone by giving them self worth. You know, like you know, we've got people leaving prison with nowhere to live. 
You know, they're being let out of prison with nowhere to live. But the prison authorities are actually telling the Joe public that they've been rehoused and they've gone to somewhere to live because when you leave prison, you have to give a postcode or an address to get a travel warrant. Now, to get that travel warrant, you know, you, you know, you have to do that. If you don't do that, you don't get a travel warrant and you don't get released. So, that they, you know, the prison authorities have got a 93% success rate of housing ex-offenders. Basically, they house none of them, you know. So you do eight, eight years and you leave with nothing. And that's why most people get, jump on that revolving door of recidivism and go straight back in again. You know, there they, they needs to be joined up thinking between the housing probation and the local authorities councils to rehouse these men and make it part of the prison sentence that they actually get trained to do a job and the people that employ these people should be subsidized to, so they employ them so that would incentivize them so if we incentivize them with somewhere to live and, and, and their rent paid because they go to work and we incentivize the employees or the employer to to employ these guys then maybe we wouldn't have that revolving door time and time and time again because it's the same people going back time and time again yeah because that's what they need it's a bit like i've said on steve's podcast at the end of the day all the prison is is a glorified hotel it needs guests that's what it is. otherwise that's hotel shuts very simple yeah. it's you know that's a, so that's the higher level of it but i totally agree with what you're saying with rehousing lads coming out i think at the time you get 77 quid yeah. now you know i lived in sorry northwest and i was in the northeast travel warrant i mean what's you know you get a travel warrant you get home you've got 77 quid now for instance somebody may you can put an address on there where a friend says you know he can stay at mine who's to say in two days he just said you can stay two days you've got, no money, you've got no traceability and guess what if you don't make that pr probation appointment which is fine you know you've got to toll the line and show you're willing but you're back inside and they're going to resort and also, to and so if, like the local council that you actually lived in or the area that you actually lived in when you actually go to the local council to get rehanced they actually say they can't actually see you for five five years because you intentionally made yourself homeless by going to prison that's their mantra now so you know most guys coming out of prison are set up the foul you know um you know, yeah, you know this, so you all touched on some point there so i've been in discussions with i haven't got the fish to mention their name i didn't know this was going to come up but it's uh, a charity who uh training funds to put a little close for instance of houses and yeah. people will be released into that little close they have a little community center there but yeah, they're yeah. all ex-prisoners who have been they're in training now in, in a skill and they will continue their training in work so this that would suit Charlie down to the T if it was a way, you know. Yeah, that's definitely. definitely. Don't you think, though, Charlie won't have any money wise, he won't have any problems? And maybe no, with won't. all the press that, and the money he can make out of it, he's actually in a better situation because he'll be that watching have that many people around him. He won't feel the need or he won't get the opportunity to do anything to put yeah. it back. No, on. yeah, that, as I yeah. say, that's a big side of it. I think he's going to use it to the maximum potential. Yeah. And he knows that every eye in the world is going to be on him. There'll be no slip-ups. Yeah. At the end of the day, we've got to remember that he's a unique character. He's a yeah. one-off. These these kind of guys come around once in a lifetime. During our lifetime, we'll never probably ever see a, pe a person like uh, Charles Bronson. You know, he's, he's so larger than life. Uh, his virtue, you know, he, 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 he's like a cartoon. He's, he's in in some ways, and he's he's universally known. He's known abroad. He's known everywhere. And like I say, there's generations, young generations. Every generation's heard of this guy. And I think like a lot, have a, a lot like of, have of the craze. If he is you a know, fighter, like you suggest, and a you know a very determined individual, he's going to come out. Mm. I wouldn't say with a chip on his shoulder, but he's going to come out with a massive. Um, kind of gusto to prove everyone right in the public and to prove the system wrong. So we, I reckon yeah. he's going to be... So I, I like Kevin, I'm minute. going to draw this to an end because I don't like these to drag on. You've all been very kind yeah. going on and I really appreciate it. And I want to thank you all for coming on. The chat's been very respectful as well. Sure, um, I like Kevin's idea. Six, you know, six months in, in you know, somewhere yeah, yeah. very reclusive and giving him that yeah. opportunity to, 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 to try and pull round. And, and mm. I think that would be great. I do want to give you guys an opportunity. Kevin's book... If you haven't read it yet, get yourself onto uh, on Amazon. UK's Mr. Shawshank, Fitted Up and Fighting Back by Kevin Lane. Um, Thank Kevin, you. Yeah, fantastic. I've read it already. Uh, it's a great book. And, and yeah, Terry's, yeah. Terry has got a lot. Just You just need to go on Amazon. Terry's got more books probably than me, I think, now. Uh, Resettlement Diaries is one of them. Um, but he's got so many stories which have taken, so many books which take you on the various journeys. And uh, well worth well worth a read. 
whether you're into your true crime, whether you're into prison books, whatever, it gives an honest opinion. And I think, you know, Terry, Terry's teamed up with... Terry, I'll just say one thing. You look like that fella and say, no alien covenant, the one at the beginning that throws the DNA in the wall. So that's what you look on the front of that book. <laughs> I've also got Bronson and me. Like, Lee, never. Lee, Wor- Lee Wortley and Paula, um, Paula Williamson wrote... Steve Wraith's got a book out, Never. No. And <laughs> Irene Dunro, we also published Irene Dunro's book, The Truth, The Whole Truth, and Nothing But The Truth, which are available <coughs> at badboysbooks.net. Bobby, Anne, Lee, thank you very much for coming on. Holly, of course, oh, who joined us earlier. Kevin Cheers, and guys. Terry, we all yeah, wanted the you. same thing, which was great. Cheers, Thanks mate. very much for coming Cheers, on. Cheers, Kevin. Cheers, 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 A big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins. You can find them at skipsandbins.com, telephone 0800 2545 253, email inquiries at skipsandbins.com, easy contract, free and pay as you go, waste collection. Thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, which are handmade in Cumbria. You can order them from mrvickies.co.uk or by calling 01768 210102. Welcome aboard to Frui Vita Getaways. You can email them at fruivitagetaways at gmail.com. Call or text them 0792-842-7895. Please join and share the Facebook group as well at Frui Vita Getaways. Book your holidays or short breaks in the UK or around the world with them. Let them find your happy place. ABTA and ATOL registered. Thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the video side of things. And thanks to qtechshop.co.uk, the makers of pool tables and snooker tables in Walls End, Newcastle. And the guys who run our website, nufcmatters.com, where you can buy lots of t-shirts and merchandise. If you want to subscribe to the show, hit the subscribe button underneath this video today. It is free to do so. Hit the thumb up to like the video. It's good for the algorithm. And click share to share to your other social media. If you do subscribe, we do send you a free car sticker. To get that, email john at nufcmatters.com and he'll post you one out. If you want to join the NUFC Matters cult, then put your smartphone over this QR code now and it will take you straight there. Alternatively, go to the website, nufcmatters.com, and you can join for a one-off payment of £25. You'll receive a cup, a pen, a membership card and a scarf and entry into the monthly draw. You can also join via YouTube, and if you click join beneath the video, you will see a variety of prices and how you can support the channel. You can alternatively make a donation with a super chat in the chat tonight. Just click the dollar sign. We're also available on iTunes and Spotify and other podcast providers. We also help the food bank on this show. NUFC fans, foodbank.co.uk is where you'll find the match day bucket and you can make a virtual donation 365 days of the year. As always, we've got a whole host of events coming up throughout the year. An evening with Nobby Solano takes place on Saturday the 25th of March at the Tyneside Irish Centre. Tickets £15. Book now at nufcmatters.com. An evening with Peter Beardsley at Leamington Labour Club. Tickets are £20. 31st of March. And uh, you can get them direct from the venue. An evening with Nobby Solano, Good Friday, the 7th of April at 4pm. Tickets are a tenner and available behind the bar at Felling Cricket Club in Gateshead. An evening with Supermac, hosted by Gibbo at the Time Mouse Surf Cafe, Tuesday, the 11th of April. And tickets direct from the venue. This is a limited ticket event, only 35 tickets available, so book soon. And an evening with Frank Clark and John Gibson, Thursday the 20th of April. Tickets are £15. Book now at nufcmatters.com. In June, Rob Lee will be at Louis Liquor Store in Newcastle. And you can get tickets direct from the venue. And an evening with Rob Lee, Lee Clark, John Beresford takes place the following evening, Friday the 2nd of June at the Grand Hotel in Gosforth. This is in aid of the Heal and Tour charity and tickets are available from their website, www.healandtour.org.uk 
forward slash events. And if you're a boxing fan, the Night of Champions comes to Gateshead at the Fed. Frank Bruno, Ricky Hatton, Nigel Benn and Joe Calzaghe are part of the UK tour. And you can get your tickets from www.goldstarpromotions.co.uk.